Somebody say praise the Lord. Good to see all of you in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to open up with something. They ask a four-year-old to write a description of creation. And this is that description exactly in a four-year-old's words. In the beginning, which was pretty close to the start, there wasn't anything except God, darkness, and some gas. And the Bible says the Lord thy God is one. But I'm pretty sure he has to be much older than that. Anyway, God made the world and then he said, give me some light. And well, somebody gave it to him. He split an Adam and he made Eve. Adam and Eve didn't wear any clothes, but they weren't embarrassed because God hadn't invented mirrors yet. Adam and Eve sinned by eating one bad apple and they were driven out of the Garden of Eden. Now, I'm not sure what God drove them in because he hadn't invented cars either. Adam and Eve's son, Cain, hated his brother as long as he was able. After a while, all of the first people died except Methuselah because I think he lived to be like a million years old. <laughs> Description of creation from a four-year-old perspective. A couple of announcements. This Sunday, we will be taking in, or starting rather, a brand new membership class. So if you are not a member and you would like to become a member, tonight is the last night for you to sign up. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board back there. Also, Sunday morning, I'll be preaching a message entitled, The Sacrifice of Praise. And I'm going to talk about what exactly that means. You know, so many times we don't uh, necessarily equate the word sacrifice with praise because praise is usually something that's freely offered and sacrifice is not so much. It's something you give until it hurts. And yet there are times in our life when we go through struggles and hardships and all we can offer is a sacrifice of praise. But I want you to know it's that kind of praise that gets God's attention. Can you say amen? 
So I'll be preaching about that Sunday morning. Uh, the following weekend, the weekend of the 11th and the 12th, the 11th will be the girls' jamboree. So any girls age 6 to 18 that are interested in attending girls' jamboree, they've already sent in the registration, but they can take on uh, add-ons and can do that the day of. They're at the Church of God campground. So any girls that are interested, if you please, please see Pastor Amy. On September the 12th, it is Grandparents' Day. We're going to celebrate all of our grandmoms and grandpops and uh, have a special guest that day, Michael Combs, Southern Gospel Recording Artist, will be with us for a special uh, special day. Uh, Wednesday, September the 15th, so two weeks from tonight, we will not gather here at our church for that Wednesday night, but we've been invited to join with the Dublin Church of God in a joint worship service that evening. They're in revival with evangelist Cliff West, who has, of course, preached for us. Matter of fact, he'll be preaching here in November, again, for us for revival. But he'll be preaching there the 12th through the 15th. So they've asked our praise team to come and do worship for them that Wednesday night, the 15th. And we want to invite all of our church family to, to join us. So it'll be a joint worship service, us with the Dublin Church of God, on that Wednesday night, the 15th. And then lastly, Saturday, uh, September the 18th, our Children's ministry, our youth ministry, and our young adult ministry are sponsoring a tailgate party. It is the day when Virginia Tech is going to beat West Virginia. That is not a prediction. That is a prophecy. They will beat West Virginia that day on the 18th. Now, if that don't happen, y'all go call me a false prophet, won't you? Uh, but I believe they're going to beat West Virginia that day on the 18th. But they're going to have a little tailgate party here at the church so everybody can join us, all of our young people, young adults, and the, and the teenagers. We're going to have a, a cookout and have some a bouncy house, I think, for the kids and uh, some uh, field day, what, what uh, Gary Tibbs has played with the kids uh, all during VBS. They'll be doing a lot of those fun games the kids all love and, and, just, and then watch the game. Watch Virginia Tech beat West Virginia on a big screen set up in the parking lot. So that'll be a wonderful day on the 18th. So I encourage all of you guys to be uh, a part of that. Stand on your feet tonight. Let's open up in prayer and ask the Lord to uh, bless our service uh, tonight and to, to touch you. I've got several requests here that I want to mention. There are, are plenty of uh, names and requests printed in the bulletin, so please reflect on those this week. But in addition to that, please continue to pray for uh, Lisa Shepard. Uh, of course, you heard me say Sunday that she wasn't sure exactly what was going on. They weren't sure if it was a, a mini stroke or amnesia, uh, but she had had lost her ability, her thought process, had forgotten what was going on while she was doing the women's conference and, and couldn't follow suit, you know, with teaching her lesson and had to be taken to the hospital. Anyway, they have diagnosed it right now as a mini stroke, and they believe that there is something going on with her heart. They're running some are going to run some tests. She talked with the doctor today, and they're going to run some, some tests. They, they believe that there may be a blockage in her heart that is causing some of these issues. So please pray for, uh, for Lisa. She's feeling much better and, and has remembered most everything apart from that weekend. That weekend, she can't really remember anything, but most all the other things she has been able to uh, regain. But please continue to pray for Sister Lisa, for Brenda Collison. This is Pastor Terry's sister that needs a healing touch. We want to continue to pray for Sister Sharon. It's good to see her tonight. And, and I believe it's her mom, Betty Root, praying for her as well. For Jennifer Blackwell, who has asked for prayer. Uh, for Andrew Ridpath, who needs uh, a healing touch. For Judy Burton, who I believe maybe has breast cancer and needs a healing touch. If you'd also pray for the Ridgeway family. Uh, this is Nate Ridgeway, who is Pastor Terry's son-in-law, married to Robin he and Robin came and, and led worship for us a couple of times while Pastor Terry was here. His father uh, got COVID about three weeks ago, fought a hard battle, and he passed away about two days ago. So that's Nate's dad in Tennessee. So please pray for that family that God would touch them and uh, help them through this difficult time. For Elaine Snuffer and for her family, her brother uh, passed away. And, uh, of course, they need comfort and strength this evening, and then for Joyce Keen, we found out uh, late yesterday evening that Joyce, her son, Joyce sits back here in the back, toward the back, uh, but her to the left here, toward the back. But her son, 53 years old, was on a fishing trip and had a massive heart attack and passed away. So 
please pray for Sister Joyce. They are traveling now. Um, he, he lived out of state about five hours away. But pray for her and for that whole family that God would help them uh, during what you can obviously uh, understand is a, a difficult time for their family as well. So all of these needs, in addition to the ones that are printed in the bulletin, and I, I wonder if, if you perhaps maybe have a special spoken request you would like us to pray about this evening as well that I've not mentioned already. Anybody at all? Brother Brian? Okay. Okay. Okay, so Brother Brian has got, uh, we're in a heart monitor having some health issues. want to pray for, for him tonight. Absolutely. Manuel. Manuel Boyce. Going to have a hip replacement? A knee replacement. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. All right, for Emmanuel needs needs a healing touch tonight as well. Yes, sir. Anybody else have a special spoken request? Okay. 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 This community in North Carolina where there was a school shooting. Let's pray for Pray for those families. Anybody else? Any unspoken need you just want to signify by a raised hand tonight? Amen. Could we all go to the throne of God together tonight? Father, we just come to you in that, that mighty, that holy, that beautiful, that matchless name of Jesus. And Father, we bring all of these petitions and our requests, Lord, to you. And we pray, God, that, Father, you would touch and heal. I pray, Lord, those that are sick in body tonight. Lord, I, I pray, God, for every name that is printed, Lord, in our bulletin, God, from this past Sunday. Lord, as we reflect on those needs and those names and those families, we pray, God, that you would minister to them in a special way, God. And, Lord, I, I pray, Father, for every spoken request. I pray, Lord, for this community, God, that... Uh, Lord, in North Carolina where this child apparently has been shot in school, Lord, and has, has died as the result of that shooting. Lord, would you comfort, I pray. God, moms and dads and brothers and sisters and, and aunts and uncles, Lord. God, bring peace, Lord, I pray. Lord, to this family, to this community, Lord, to our country, to the world. God, we pray for perfect peace. Lord, peace that only comes down from above. Peace unlike the world gives, but peace, God, that, that you give to us, Lord. And that's why our hearts, God, can be at ease. Lord, even in the midst of suffering and struggles and challenges, Lord, I, I pray, Father, for Emmanuel tonight that needs a healing touch. God, touch his knee, Lord, we pray. And minister strength and health, God, and recovery, Lord, to his life. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, for Reverend Brian Mann, that you would touch him, Lord, in a significant way. I pray, Lord, for this heart issues, Lord, that, uh, Lord, they're monitoring and testing, God. We declare and decree the word of the living God over his life right now, that with your stripes, God, we, we are healed. It's not a question of if. We are, the Bible says, and, and we lay claim to that and believe that and receive that in to our lives by faith tonight in Jesus name Lord I pray for these other names God that I've mentioned Lord for uh, Reverend Lisa God I pray for Brenda Lord I pray for Sharon and for Betty I pray Lord for Jennifer and for Andrew and for Judy God I pray for the Ridgeway family would you touch brother Nate I pray and that old family and comfort them Lord and strengthen them through this difficult trying time in their in their family right now bring peace that the Bible says surpasses all natural understanding I pray Lord for Elaine Snuff for God and also Joyce Keene both of them Elaine with her brother and Joyce with her son Lord would you just bring sweeping moments I pray of comfort Lord to them and God let the joy of the Lord be their strength I pray God that they would hold fast God to the hope that we have in Jesus and that hope God would be a source of strength God to them and, and peace Lord even in the midst of, of this difficult time of loss be with these families God and so many more I'm sure God that are suffering with COVID some God that perhaps have, have lost the battle Lord touch them I pray and 
heal them, God. Bring an end, we pray, oh God, to this, to this virus, to this disease, Lord God. Bring an end to it, we pray. God, you are our healer. You are Jehovah Rapha, Lord. And we, we stand upon the sure foundation of the word of God, Lord. When, when the earth all around me is sinking sand on Christ, the solid rock, we can still stand tonight, Lord. And we stake our claim in every promise of God. It doesn't matter how many there are. They are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And we are recipients. We are beneficiaries to the promises of God. And we receive them by faith tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. And give you the praise and the glory and the honor, Lord, for the great things, God, that you've done and you continue to do in our lives. I pray, Lord, for this service. Would you anoint Pastor Amy, Lord, and Pastor Mikey, Lord, this group, the band, the singers, Lord, as they lead us in worship. I pray, God, that you would anoint Pastor Joni as she comes in just a moment and she breaks the bread of life and begins to teach us, Lord, from your teaching, God. She she begins to expound upon the sermon, God, that you preached so many years ago that, that still brings brings life, Lord God, that still speaks to the hearts of Christians and draws us, Lord, closer. It compels us, Lord God, to put away the things of this world and to cling to the cross of Calvary, Lord, I pray that you would anoint the words of her mouth, God, and Lord, may they fall on good ground, good soil tonight, God. Produce in us, God, what it is that you desire to produce, God. Be glorified, I pray, and honored and magnified in this service, Lord, and we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor everything, God, that you've done. And we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, amen and amen. Look at somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord tonight. And you can be seated. We're going to receive our, our offering, tithe and offering at this time. Let me just say, uh, man, how appreciative I am. And you, you know it, but I'm going to say it again because I want to brag on our great church. Two, two Sundays ago, I mentioned this past Sunday, two Sundays ago, we uh, took up an offering, you know, just the last minute, a couple of days, made an announcement, took up an offering and sent $2,000 to the, the Haiti Relief Operation Compassion with the Church of God. This past Sunday, we had our mission service back to back, and we were able to give another $2,000 check to our missionary. So God bless you, and thank you for your giving and your your support. And we know what the Bible says. When we give unto the Lord, He will restore and replenish and refill your household. So, so thank you for giving and sowing. And I just pray a blessing of the Lord upon you and upon your families tonight. Would our ushers come at this time? And I'll ask Brother uh, Jack, our elder, Jack Sheila, if he doesn't mind, to say a blessing over this offering tonight. Amen. God bless you tonight as you as you give.
keep telling the guys I don't play often, but, you know, something about playing this guitar put me in a memory when I first started as a teenager leading songs in our worship. And I was just so grateful for the people who took time to teach me. And there was one song we always sung about stones not crying out. It was kind of rocky. <laughs> I, I didn't know all the chords, and that's why I was thankful for the guys who backed me up. But it got me thinking of that old song. How many are not going to let a stone in the last days cry the praise of God in their place? I don't know about you, but I will not let a rock cry louder than I am the praises of God. So no matter what situation, I'm going to make sure God finds me praising Him. Find me in the valley Standing with my hands held high Ooh, the valley Will never take my song Find me in the desert
the presence of the Lord here tonight and that song has stirred me up because I'm going to tell you something there ain't no rock going to cry out in my place as long as I have breath in my body No. 
Thank you, Father, for this privilege to be able to come into your house and to worship you. We have gathered in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we have come to open up our hearts and receive your word. Whatever you have for us, God, we want you to pour yourself out and minister in our lives. Thank you for your presence that is here with us. Bless our youth, Lord, as they go over in just a moment. We thank you for our young people, God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives, oh God. And we pray for each one of them, Lord, that your hand be upon them. And God, that you would use them in this day for your glory. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Continue to bless and be with us in the remainder of this service. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. It is so good to feel the presence of the Lord in our midst tonight, and it's so good to have each one of you with us. And uh, we're starting a new series and the title of it is The Sermon on the Mount, and this is by Jimmy Swaggart. But before we go into that, we're going to see where Jesus traveled from town to town and in the region of Galilee. And he preached the word, he went out, he preached the word, he healed the sick, and you know what? Crowds followed him wherever he went because they were interested in what was going on. And in Matthew chapter 5, we see where Jesus went up on a mountain and he sat down. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He started out with what we're going to talk about tonight, which is the Beatitudes. And that was the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount, which is what we're going to go into in the next few weeks. And he started out at the beginning of, with spiritual instructions and to help them to move on. From verse 3 to 10 in Matthew 5, each of that verse begins with the word blessed. I know you've all read them. It begins with the word blessed. Now, this is a word we all like to hear. How many of you like to hear that word Blessed. Yeah, we like that word. How many of you know what the word blessed means? Does it, do any of you know what it means? I mean, it has a few meanings, but do you know what? This is interesting when I was studying to find out that the word blessed used in the beatitude means happy. So if you take that, and it's still blessed, it's still the same, but so you take each one of those beatitudes and you put the word happy in front of them so just think about that for just a moment i'm gonna get uh, let's see jack elizabeth would you help pass these out do you mind these are the beatitudes that we're going to go over here tonight thank you dear And once we look over these Beatitudes and we start going over them, you're going to notice that the Beatitudes begin with a blessing, because the word blessed is there, and it's going to end with a reason for that blessing. So y'all hold on to that, okay? Okay. 
this sister Elizabeth, I need you and Jack to come back. We're not quite through. I'm going to hand you something else to go with this Beatitudes. Just take some of these bats out. Thank you, dear. Take them, pass them out. In your bag is nine pieces of candy. And it's going to stand for your Beatitudes, okay? There's nine pieces of candy in there. And we got nine Beatitudes that we're going to go over. If you run out, we got a little bit more up here. So, y'all, I want y'all to hold on to that and think about it while we do these Beatitudes here in just one moment, okay? I hope we have enough. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Okay. I think we will have enough. Y'all got them passed out? Okay, everybody got your paper there. We're going to go over, we're going to read them, and then we're going to talk about them. Thank you all for helping me. The first one is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comfort. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight is the Beatitudes. And the first one that we went over is blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the poor in spirit in this verse means to realize that we are spiritually bankrupt without God, and without Him, we're also lost. And once a person understands this, then they can begin to move in their heart and their life and allow God to change them and put something in there that is good. You know, in the day and time that we live in, people have a hard time admitting that they are spiritually bankrupt. And that happens. Amen? You know, when we come to this point, we need to admit it and we need to call on God because when we do, he has grace, he has mercy, he has love, and when we truly call upon the name of the Lord, he will change our lives. Amen? Every one of us sitting here, if you know Jesus as your Savior, or you're watching by Facebook Live and you know him, he changed your life. You are not the person that you used to be. And you know, in the day and time that we live in, people have a hard time admitting that they are spiritually bankrupt. But you know what? If we, if we come to that point in our life, we need to admit it. We need to say it, ask God to forgive us, and he will. Amen. And it's just like if you're spiritually bankrupt and you need God and you come and seek him, he will fill you up. Praise the Lord. The second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
This verse isn't really referring to sadness we feel when we have a loved one to pass away. If you dig deep and kind of study it, it's talking about to grieve because of your own personal moral poverty. Now think about that for just a moment. Romans 3 and 23 tells us, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this lets us know that none of us sitting here tonight are perfect. But Romans 6 and 14 lets us know that sin does not have to have dominion over us. And I want to hear an amen. Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law. I'm not under law. We are under the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know... Tonight, each one of us sitting here should be thankful for God's amazing grace. That amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Praise God, I was blind, but now I see. Isn't it wonderful to be able to proclaim that? That's who we used to be, but look what God came and did in our lives. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The third beatitude is blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek follow in order with the poor in spirit and with those who mourn. In other words, the first two Beatitudes guarantee you meekness. And Jesus tells us in Matthew 11 and 29 that he was meek and lowly in heart. And you need, we need to understand there's a difference between meekness and weakness. Amen? There's a big difference. And it's controlled strength. And let's pray that this statement can be made about each one of us. That people, when they look at our lives, that here's what they'll say. They are so full of God because they are so empty to self. Think about that for a moment. I want to be full of the Spirit of the Lord. How about you? And I know our self is going to matter at times. I, I'm not saying that. But you know, there are times we need to put self behind. And we need to put Jesus out there in front. You know what? It's not about you and it's not about me. It's all about Jesus. Think about that for a moment. You know, if we're doing anything for the Lord to make ourselves look good, then we're doing it for the wrong reason. Because it ain't about us. It's all about him. Psalms 37 and 11 tells us, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Praise the Lord. The fourth beatitude, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. How many of you have ever been hungry? And you go to the get you a good supper or you go out and eat and you start eating and you feel really good don't you well you know what listen to what the word says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled and this verse speaks about an intense desire for God just like we have that natural desire for food and if you and I don't eat in the natural, eventually we're going to starve and we're going to die. Amen? Same way spiritually. We need to come to the table. The Lord has prepared it for us. We need to come and take and partake of that and let the Holy Spirit be in our lives. You know, if we don't feed our spiritual man with God's love and with God's word, you know what's going to happen to us? We're going to die spiritually. I do not want to die spiritually. 
I want to stay spiritually alive. And I want to get out there and do what God has called me to do. And you need to realize that you need to get out there and do what God has called you to do. Because I truly believe with all my heart, we don't have a whole lot of time left down here. Things are happening that we have never seen before. And we need to realize, I tell you, we need to feed the spiritual man with the word of God. We need to have the word of God inside of us and allow God to use us. And the only way we can be filled with the righteousness of God is by placing our faith completely in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The fifth beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know what? Mercy is a lot more than just feeling pity. It's action that goes beyond your thought. Just as Jesus has shown each one of us his mercy, he also shows mercy to others. Aren't you so thankful for his mercy? Where would we be without his mercy? Think about that. Galatians 6, 1 and 2 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, we are brothers and sisters here in the Lord. Amen. And you know what? It's not, we all have done wrong. Amen? We all have done, failed the Lord at one time or another. But you know what? We don't need to beat each other down. We need to be there and help one another. Because, like I said, I feel like the Lord is getting ready to come back. And we want everybody to be ready. And I'm going to tell you and stand here, I am not a perfect person. I have made mistakes. I have done things and had to go and repent. But you know what? We need to encourage one another and be there for one another and help one another. The Bible says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, we should be able to come. Kathy, I should be able to come to talk to you. You should be able to come to talk to me. And we be there for each other and hold each other up in prayer. Because like I say, we're living in a time like we've never seen before. And we want to be ready and we want to help everybody be ready. Amen? Yes, we do. All right. Let's see. I need some more help. All right, you two, come on. I'm going to have a little test here, okay, and see if anybody needs any pens. Pass those out, honey. Okay, here you go. Pass that. Here you go. It's just a little short quiz, okay? It's not but four questions. But you're going to have to answer those questions. And if you need a pen, let Jack know, okay? We got four questions here. And this just answer yes or no. So that's you don't have to, anything else. Yes or no will be the answer. So you can go one, two, three, four.
Everybody got one? Okay. Thank y'all. This is for you only, okay? And let's ask, I'm going to ask these questions, and I want you to be honest. And this is for you, just for your piece of paper. Nobody else is going to see it, okay? Question number one. Am I merciful to others? Ask yourself. There they are up there. Am I merciful to others? Yes or no? And don't put maybe. <laughs> it's yes or no, okay? <laughs> no maybes in this, okay? Number two, am I slow to judge and quick to love? Number three, do I pray for others instead of condemning them? And number four, do I open my heart to others and truly learn to love them? Now, this is something for each one of us. And I hope we can all answer these honestly. But you know what? Think about this. Am I merciful to others? I want you to stop and think a moment for God's mercy and grace upon our lives. Think about that for a moment. A lot of us, you know, some of you might be sitting there saying, well, you know, I didn't do a whole lot of bad things, too many sinful things. Sin is sin. And he forgave us. And we ought to have a merciful and loving spirit to other people. Am I slow to judge and quick to love? Think about that. Are you slow to judge people? That's a good thing. And are you quick to have love for them? Do I pray for others instead of condemning them? You know, that's one thing. We can down people all we want, but it ain't going to help them. You know what's going to help them is when we get down on our knees and we begin to pray. How many of you know that's true? Amen. I've seen it happen, and it wasn't because Joni was praying. It was because prayers were going up. And when you get down to business with God, he knows it. He will hear and answer prayer. Do I open my heart to others and truly learn to love them? How many of you realize there are some people out there that are a little bit harder to love? Am I the only one that ever had that problem? <laughs> That's true. It is. But you know what? If we Listen to this. If we open up our hearts to others and we allow the Lord to work through us, He's going to help us to be able to love that person that is not so lovable. And there are people out there like that. But you know what? Aren't you so thankful that Jesus didn't do that? That he loves every one of us? And he loves us unconditionally? The sixth beatitude. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall See God. You know, no matter how sincere a man is within his own ability, his own strength, his own talents, his own efforts, he can't make himself pure. We can't do that. There's only one who can. And the only way that's going to happen is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the only one who has, has, has had a true and pure heart is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for that. Now, it's not just talking about seeing God in the physical. It's talking about one 
day in the near future, we may see God manifest himself in our lives. And how many of you know that God does work in our lives? Amen. Can you raise your hand and say, if God has ever worked in your life? Yes, he has. He's done things that are amazing. And, you know, if we had time to go around here tonight and let everybody testify, we would be totally amazed at what God has done and what God is doing. And just real quick here, just to say this, I look at Mitzi sitting there with us, sitting there with us tonight. And Mitzi, you truly are a miracle from God. If, you know, if, if, if we heard her testimony and know all that she's been through, we would look at her and say, thank you, Father. There's a miracle sitting right here among us. Praise the Lord. That's the God that we serve. Serving God is the most wonderful, greatest, and most fulfilling thing ever. We need to feel that way. We need to be excited about serving Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, we are in the time of the end. And if we're excited about Jesus Christ, then we need to go and tell others about Jesus Christ. It is our responsibility. It's not just Pastor Marcus or any pastor sitting in here tonight or watching by Facebook Live. Yes, that's what God's called them to do. I know that, and I understand that. But you know what? He has commissioned us to go too and to tell others about Jesus Christ. You know people, you all know people that I'll never be able to meet. And they need Jesus. And we need to realize we are living in the time of the end, and it's time to get out there and start telling people about Jesus. And let them know what God can do in their lives. Because look what God has done for you. We've all got a testimony. Amen? Sister Elizabeth sitting over here has got a mighty testimony. Mighty testimony. And you know what? Thank you for that. And I think about um, Brother Brian Mann and wanting to reach out into the jails and and minister to people there. That's wonderful. That's so wonderful because there are people that need to know about Jesus. They need to hear the word. Serving God is wonderful. Amen? Is it the greatest and most fulfilling thing that's ever happened to you? Yes. I couldn't imagine getting up tomorrow and not knowing Jesus Christ is my Savior. I could not imagine getting out of the bed and trying to go forth and not knowing Him. I tell you what, He has been so good to us. Yes, we've been through difficult times. And again, Mitzi could tell us all about it, but He's kept His hand upon you, hasn't He? And He brought you through. Praise the Lord. 1 John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. Praise God. One day, we're going to see him. We, we haven't been able to here on this earth, but one day, we're going to see him. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, there's a heavenly home awaiting each and every one of us. And I'm not standing here and telling you that I want to die because I don't mean that. But when it's my time, Pastor Amy, Amy, I'm thankful because I know that I've given my life to the Lord and one day we're going to spend eternity with him. And I tell you what, that ought to get every one of us excited. Praise the Lord. You know, one day we're going to stand before him. and He's going to look into our hearts and he knows what is there. And I'm not standing here and telling you I'm a perfect person because I'm not. And I, I want God, the things that, that I need to work on, I want him to help me with. I truly, truly do. The seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they shall be called the sons of God. This beatitude is not just about individuals attempting to make peace in the physical sense. It's proclaiming God's way of bringing peace to a troubled soul. A self-righteous person, whether a believer or not, has peace, has no peace, excuse me, because he has no peace with God. How many of you know that peace that I'm talking about? Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing the peace of God? And I tell you, every one of us in here, if we had time, could give a testimony of a time that that peace came over you. Man, it, 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 it was just unreal. Praise the Lord. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, hallelujah, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Our hearts must be purified before we can Know about the peacemaker. Praise the Lord that he is the peacemaker. In Isaiah 9 and 6, the word tells us that God we serve, the God we serve is called wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. That is the God that we serve. That ought to just do something for each and every one of this. You know, and we've heard that scripture many times before. But I tell you, Donna, when I was studying it, have you ever done that, gone across the scripture, and you've read it many, many times, but then all of a sudden you read it and something happens. Something comes out of that. And I thought about that. The God we serve, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. That's how we need to look at him. Praise the Lord. The eighth beatitude. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This means those who operate from the realm of self-righteousness will persecute those who trust in God's righteousness but you know that it shouldn't matter what people say or do regardless of what happens to you and I on this earth one day we're going to go to our heavenly home and God's going to repay you and I for our faithfulness to him and praise God, even though we are not liked at times and people have made fun of us, and in some cases there's been Christians that have been persecuted, that is going to come to an end. Praise God. It ain't going to continue to happen. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when we're all together in heaven? Wow. Wow. I don't think our minds could even comprehend what it's going to be like. And the ninth beatitude, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. And you know, Jesus sums it up in verse 12 of Matthew chapter 5. He says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before us. Think about that. One day, we're going to be rejoicing in heaven. We're not going to be sitting in heaven with masks on. Amen. We're not going to have to worry if the person next to us got a germ or not. Amen. Amen. We're not going to have all those things happen. We're going to be in heaven with Jesus. Think about it. Walking on streets of gold. Seeing things that we have never seen before. You're talking about peace. 
Oh, my, I can't even imagine what it's going to feel like. But I am so thankful. I am so thankful for our Heavenly Father and what He has done for us. You know, there's times we've been persecuted, cast down, because we believe in Jesus. There's people that don't like you, and there's people that don't like me, because we believe in Jesus. But you know what? I ain't worried about it. I'm not worried about it. We need to remember that we're not the first to undergo persecutions because the prophets before us, they had to deal with that. And listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew 5 and 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Each one of us are a light in this world. There are people that are looking at our lives. And my number one prayer is that when people look at my life, that they see Jesus. I don't want them to see Joni. I want them to see Jesus in my life. Because I, I tell you what, we're all called to work for the Lord, all of us, to be an example for him, to go out and to tell others about him. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 14. You are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are the light of this world. You're a light to your family. Like I say, you're a light to those that you work with. You're a light in Walmart. Wherever we go, we are that light for Jesus Christ. You know, the Beatitudes are amazing words that Jesus gave to us so we could walk in his will and in his way. When we apply these spiritual instructions to our lives, we're going to be happy and we're going to be blessed. Now, it doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect, but aren't you glad tonight that you know who to go to? We know to go to Jesus, and I am so, so thankful for that. That concludes our lesson tonight on the Beatitudes, and I appreciate each one of you for coming out and being with us, and we're going to continue on in this uh, chapter and it's going to be very good. I'm looking forward to it. it. It's really, I love this book of the Bible, and it's going to be a real blessing to us. And we're going to uh, learn some things we need to be doing and learn some things we don't need to be doing. Amen. But thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. God bless you.